think all my friends could have a go on you, but I have a go on me. I'm not a fucking merry-go-round. Uh, you know, really, wow, well, really. Um, well. But no, I mean, you're not any of their type. They all go like Miriam goes to music. Well, I don't like funny, sexy, no. really good bed. Mir- Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 11. I don't know why I keep singing these crap intros. Um, I'm James Haskell. I'm Chloe Maidley. Um, and we had a little break from Carl's Quarantine. Yes, we did. Uh, but we're back. We're back now this week. Um, we're back because we want to bring some more stories, some more entertainment, help you with your relationship goals, help you understand that all couples are normal and going through the same stuff. You've had a lovely little week in London. Away yes. from your husband. Yes, it's been great. Playing up. Yeah. You said there were three men coming on to you in the gym today? No, oh, three of these three old men. Oh my God, they were so cute. The floor was wet. He was like <laughs> shouting up the stairs. He was like, Tim, Tim, the floor is wet. And then he looked at me and he was like, I'm really worried about Tim. I was like, I'll go get Tim. Tim. <laughs> he went upstairs. Tim's Tim. there like waking, waiting for his other mate. I'll just call him Alan, holding the door open. I was like, are you Tim? He's like, yes. I was like, the floor is wet. He was like, oh, thanks, Bob. Oh no. Old it was so cute. I texted James and he was like, I was like, I just met the cutest men in the gym. And he was like, stop hanging out with men at the gym. I yeah. was like, they were about eight. <laughs> Flirt little whole bag. Um, but we've had some great responses to the last few shows. Yes. Very excitingly. Uh, but apologise again that we decided to take a week. But every 10 episodes, we're going to have a little bit of a break. Because uh, the first series is going to be 20 episodes. And if we come back for more, we're hoping for some sponsors. Anyway, so no, it was also good because you've, you've been promoting your book. And I've started oh, my new business. So. What a flanker. Yeah. It's out. It's out. It's out now. It's. It was a Times bestseller. Yes, we are drinking, by the way. It was a Times bestseller last week, number eight. And do you know what's happened this week? It's only got a bloody number seven as a Times bestseller on Sunday. Good boy. Well Audio book's going well. So if you like this level of chat, but more about my rugby career and stories and like funny stuff. Get the audiobook because he makes more money off of royalties from the audio book. Well, I, I think it? so. Is that true? Yeah, but I wasn't going to go there, but now you said it. It's true. And I, when oh, I found audiobook. that out, I was really like, really jealous that all my books are like health and fitness guide so I can't really get away with doing an audio book I was like damn it my publisher was like yeah you need to push the hardbacks I was like yeah I'll push the hardbacks audio book yeah. um, right so what we got this week well I thought we would start with a story that's a lot of s's in one sentence <laughs> start, with start with a story that um is absolutely fucking brilliant and this guy's called Reese. is that how you say it the Welsh obviously Reese. yeah yeah Reese Davies I can't, right, do the, I can't do the Welsh accent. I love that I'm presuming he's not. I mean, there's no way in hell he's not Welsh with that. No, name. Reese Davis. 100%. So doing the accent. Yeah. Right. So I'll get James through it, but honestly, this is. It's had me howling. Okay. You're very articulate and funny, Reese. Uh, we actually weren't. Oh, no, we're not supposed to name people. No, but his is a story. Oh, all right. You'll, all right. you'll understand why we've named yeah, we him when we read normally, it. But this is genius. Okay. Hi, right, James and Chloe. <laughs> Absolutely love the podcast. My partner and I discovered it last week and have been binge listening ever since. <laughs> After listening to the most recent episode, my partner encouraged me to tell the story of my worst catfish experience during my single days. It's a story I told her when we were dating that left her in absolute disbelief. It all began on a bitterly cold November night. <laughs> Sorry. Bitterly? <laughs> I keep going into West Country, all right? Everything okay? <laughs> you always do. <laughs> cold November night in Bristol. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'll do it in normal. I was around 20, 21 years old. And I've been speaking to this girl on Tinder, and we were getting on like a house on fire. We finally decided to meet up, and for our first for our first official date, I was incredibly nervous, as she seemed really great, and I just didn't want it to go wrong. We met up by the waterside, said hello, and it was it was blowing a bone chilling gale. We drove straight into the nearest pub. She went and grabbed us a booth near a radiator. What would you like? I called back. Cranberry juice, please. That's a fucking warning sign right there. She replied. I ordered the beverages. A ginger beer for me and cranberry juice for her. <laughs> Fucking hell. PG. Absolutely. So absolutely PG. crack city around your place. <laughs> <laughs> we literally can't even record a podcast without having a drink. <laughs> uh, speak for yourself. Um, juice for her. It was, a, it was a Tuesday and I was driving, so I thought nothing of ordering two soft drinks. Uh, explain it. Details. Um, I returned to the booth and she'd taken the bench seat uh, if the booth, uh, sorry, of the booth facing me. She had taken off her massive poofy coat and I could finally see what she looked like. She was incredibly cute and pretty. I got excited to how the skate was going to go. Phew. And then we talked and talked and talked. We laughed a lot. The minutes turned to hours and I thought, she's amazing. What could go wrong? 
And suddenly nature called me. I was busting for the toilet, so I excused myself and do my number ones. <laughs> Good thing you detailed, not take like a dump on a date. When I returned, she asked if I didn't mind watching her bag. She shimmied round and stood up, and I saw it. What could possibly go wrong? A bump. A baby bump. A large baby bump. One or two things happened here. Either I'd fucked her so well and come so hard in the future that it had ripped through the fabric of the space-time continuum and made all timeline versions of her since she met me pregnant. <laughs> Great sci-fi knowledge there. Or she's up the dust with another man's kid. Yeah. Um, what's going on here? I managed to muster out, completely stunned. Oh, this! She said innocently. Sorry, I forgot to mention. I'm eight months pregnant. And off she went to the toilet. I sat there at a loss of what to do, disappointed at this revelation when everything was going so well. She returns and ding, 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 time at the bar. Quite literally, saved by the bell. So we walk out and we say the usual end of date bits and pieces. Anyway, I best dash and the bus will be here in two minutes, she says. Turned out she lived in not a great area of Bristol and it being 11pm at night in winter, I couldn't in all good consciousness let her go home on her own as a heavily pregnant woman. So I offered her a lift. As she was talking to me, all I was thinking was, please don't have the baby in here. <laughs> I hate having to explain why I've got placenta then stain. Then by, by default, it's your kid. <laughs> so I offered her a lift and she was talking to me and all I was thinking, please don't have the, the baby in here. I'd hate to explain why I've got placenta, placenta stains in my dad's Ford Focus. And that was the worst catfish experience. All the best to you both and keep the great stuff coming. Very Fucking good, out. very good. As if she thought she was going to get away with that. Even oh. future me had fucked her so well and come so hard that her it tore through the space time continuum. The sp- the space time continuum. <laughs> every future, every future path of her life was with me with a baby. I mean, lad. Mm. You're just There's not really much funny. advice I can give you there. I mean, I'm interested in what the woman thought. Well, okay, let's let's just take a great story. What would you do if that was you? I mean... Let's just say, hypothetically, this girl was, like, the fit, like, Margot Robbie fit, right? And the coolest girl, like, okay, we've got a friend called Orla, and James loves her, and he's like, she's the fucking coolest girl in the world. Like, all girls should be like her. All of personality... No, go to her head, yeah, but not yeah. No, I told her the other day, and she was like, I'm so flattered. <laughs> um, all of personality, Margot Robbie, everything, yeah. baby bump. Mm-hmm. But you are vibing. The chemistry is there. Yeah. What do you do? <laughs> Looks like I'm going to be a dad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would scare you off. The only thing I think it might scare you off is because I think your parents would have a thing or two to say about it. And that might be the one chink in the arm. I mean, ordinarily, because you know me right, I would say my parents have a thing to say. But I think they've got a thing to say about everything I do, including <laughs> this fucking podcast. So I really think with that, the expression horse and bolted comes to mind in that respect. Um, I mean, it'd be interesting to see because I would have to be like... Where's the dad in this this set setup? You know. But also, if, if the dad was bigger than me, like bigger, more aggressive, more tattooed, that'd be, be like, I'd be, that'd be quite. But if but I was I like the king of the castle, it'd be fine. I mean, if if I was on a date with a guy and it, it was like a 10 he was out pregnant, of 10. <laughs> I'd fucking marry that guy because <laughs> he's gonna make you a lot of money. Are you a seahorse? Um, I and he said to me, I've got a newborn at home. Me and my missus aren't together. Um, the only thing that would make me wary is that it was a, is that it obviously would be very fresh kind of thing yeah like, and i think people who do have children together are more inclined to make it work so that would be the only thing that's in the way but i wouldn't care at all if that's the trajectory that his life just had just so yeah. happened to take just when i met him i mean i would also have, probably have said potentially you know if it was like a story to it <laughs> like uh he was like a hero and like there was like a backstory he was like yeah special forces and he died and he's left me with this and i need you know need to look after me of like, course you'd want a special forces baby and so it could have all the amazing genetics yeah and you could like but like oh god it's like lebron james's kid i'm like i'm gonna actually adopt that lebron came over and then he left her um okay right congratulations to the la lakers by the way not they're gonna watch this this one's an actual so, actually, we did actually wait with on the topic of catfishing what, what's your if thing or take on filters on photos and um, f- for people, because you know, not Ask cat- you. Don't think I haven't been watching her stories this week. James has got a weird shade of blurry orange in all of his stories, and I keep texting him, like, why are you using a filter? What are you doing? I quite like it, and I know you're watching it, it's pissing you off, it's like passive aggressive. Um, no, but we talked about a couple of women wearing too much makeup and that men not having the ability to, you know, you can't, this is the best you're going to get, right? You can trim your lid and, you know, get, you know, insert your hair potentially, but. Tread. But what? What's about this thing on, on on social media now with all the photos altered? Like yeah. where 
the, the, the rest of the photo is fine, but the boat has been face tuned to an inch of its life. Boat raised face, by the way, for those people who don't speak. <laughs> can't me. I'm not a cockney. Um, I'm a bit surprised. Is that legal? Is that is that is that a go? Because I think there's a lot of people filtering themselves, and you so, meet them in public, and you're yeah. like. I don't recognise you. I, yeah, I think 99.9% of women, myself included, my friends as well, will put a nice filter on a photo before uploading it, simply because it's kind of like adding another layer of makeup. So it's like you're already trying to look pretty when you're wearing a full face of makeup, but at this point it's 2am and you've been drinking since 10pm. I'll just put a, a filter on it and that's completely fine. But you'll also notice that for me, especially given what I do, which is work in the physique um industry it's also really important that i show people what i look like head to toe like all the time so i'll put up photos when i'm not in shape i'm like right now i am like bigger than i've been in a while and that's completely fine i'm in the gym i'm lifting really heavy like i'm building muscle i'm in a good place um but i also will put up photos of me looking like that or me with cellulite to show people that just because you know you can look amazing sometimes it's completely unrealistic to think that everybody looks amazing all the time and that's what social media is doing it's trying to convince people that everybody looks fantastic 24 7 and they fucking don't um so i think it's totally fine as long as you also show show the other side of it and like the other day i put up a photo of me that was a like a test shot of a photo shoot of the computer screen when the photo had been taken and i was like i always love the pre airbrush shots because obviously i work to have like some muscle cuts yeah. because they don't airbrush you to look skinnier and somebody put under it now you've just exposed yourself now the whole world knows that you airbrush all your photos how are we ever meant to buy anything you're selling again and oh, i responded fuck off. and i was like a you've completely missed the point of the photo and the post B, I mean, shockingly, I actually am not in charge of all my shoots. There is such a thing as um, editorial, like, creative license that I don't have control over. And now what I've done is I've just started putting up behind-the-scenes videos of me at shoots so people can see what I really fucking look like yeah. in that shoot. Yeah, but they, they, they polish you down instead of... They, yeah, they make me softer. Right. They, they, well, I fucking hate they that. They take my, my like... Because apparently you're, you're too inaccessible. Um, But yeah, anyway, so look, yes, I agree with you. Women's health, like, put me on the cover. I love an avocado pizza and my, here's my roast <laughs> dinner's my best life. Do you want somebody who's really trained in great shape? No. <laughs> I want to look like the special K lady in a bikini because that's what's really easy for every woman. Oh, right, look, don't um, go too far the other way with judging women. Anyway, look, all I'm saying is that I think it's completely fine and completely normal. It's just like getting your hair and makeup done before a night out. But I will say that you have to show the other side of it. Otherwise, you women, you are doing yeah, other but I, women. I just, I'd be interested to see the listeners. How many times, lads, this is particular, because men can't really do it. I mean, there's that guy, George Alvarez, the, oh, no, that, I can't say that now, whatever his name, Jessica Alvarez now, the one who, the, the Ken doll. Ken Alvarez, who changed the I don't know who you're talking about. Like the one who's like had so much work. I just generally like, don't read stories. Like men, could, you could probably go to those extremes. I wouldn't advise it. But there is, um, I just think, I'm interested to see what men, are, who are single men who listen to this, if you do, how you find it going on dates. Because there's loads of pictures on Tinder. I, my friends show me and they're like, what Jamie. do you think of this? I'm like, well, there's, you can see her face does not look like that in any way, shape or form. And then when you meet them, you just must be like, are you... Hello, McFly. Well, you've seen, you see photos. Hello, McFly. Yeah. Anybody home? Think, McFly. Yeah. Think. Um, you've seen photos of me on Instagram that I've that are clearly airbrushed. I mean, 100%. Air, well, not even really airbrushed, but filtered. And But also, photos of me after shoots have been airbrushed where all of me looks yeah, softer, Chloe, my body and my face. This is, no, no, no this but then you see is. me like now in real life. Are you? Is it jarring or are you like, eh? No, no, we, no, no, no you're, you're putting a little bit of a face tune to take some blemishes out is one thing. These people have rebuilt their faces. Like it's yeah, right ridiculous. There is one filter. It's crazy. Like I hold it up in front of myself, and the second that I click it, and I never do it because it's so obvious that it's embarrassing. Like you know when it's that obvious that you've put a filter on, it's just like way too much. Like it's like my pride is like hurt that anyone would think that I thought I could get away with that, and I click it at my whole face changes like my hairline comes down my nose goes in it tips up at the bottom my lips fill out and my eyes go bigger and more cat like cat like swooped at the side my cheekbones come up and it's like i've literally woken up and it's five o'clock in the morning and i look like i've been in hair and makeup for three or four hours and i'm like how the fuck are these people doing it what i don't get is like 
And I showed you what you can do on Facetune. You can change the shape of your body. There's a lot of girls on Instagram right now who are my competition in the health and fitness world, which is fucking cool because they don't know anything about anything. <laughs> and they're editing their bodies to be like the perfect shape and then selling health and fitness plans. I'm like, one, you're not qualified. Two, you don't look like that. And I'm not saying I look in shape all the time, but I am qualified. They talk about how I don't look in shape all the time and why. I'm, I'm it's just, infuriating. I'm just intrigued because you showed me the other day, won't mention her name. But this person who's like walking around like bam, tsh, da, 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 tsh, and, I, and I like I was like oh look you know she, she's obviously all right and you went <laughs> look at the uh, look, at, look at the pat photos versus the real life photos and one of them looked like a burst beanbag and the other one looked like supermodel and it's like mad how do you think they get away with it so I'm interested in all the people who go on dates who must just go. There's not an unbelievable catfish. It's not like, you know, you, you turn up and the person's two foot high or, you know, or they're like completely different person. I'm talking about the ones where you, you think you know what you're getting into and you sit back down and you're like, oh God, you've literally built your body on your iPhone. It must be cool to go on a date with a girl nowadays and sit down and be like, oh, you're actually more attractive in the flesh. Yes, that would That happen. happens to women all the time. So like a lot of men obviously don't do hair and makeup, don't know how to pose for a photo, don't know when they look good in a photo. So they never really, so that like you go to show your friends a guy you're dating or sleeping with and you're like, oh, there's no good photos of him. And they're like, okay. But then like when they meet him in real life, they're yeah. like, oh, he's really hot. And like that, that happened always... with me and your friends, isn't it? <laughs> I think all my friends would have a go on you, but I have a go on me. I'm not a fucking merry-go-round. Uh, you know, really? Wow. Well, really? Um, well. But no, I mean, you're not any of their type. They all go like Miriam goes to musicians. What, I don't like funny, sexy, no. really good bed. Miriam people. goes to musicians. Hannah goes for pretty boys. Julia goes for pretty boys. You you don't fall into any of these oh, categories. What musician pretty boy? No, I you mean... fall into like gladiator. Look, you're fit as fuck. Calm down. You're just you're of a type. <laughs> As am I. Do you know how many of my male friends are like, ooh, you look jacked. I'm oh, like, oh, God, I wish people would piss off about that. I wore, like... I wore a tank top the other day and my friend looked at me and he was like, oh, you look jacked. And I was like, is that a bad thing? I'm in a muscle building phase. Oh, That's a compliment. God. He was like, you're getting too big. And oh, I was like, there's no such thing as too anything. Stop telling people. If you want to be, look, there's no, no such thing as too fat and it's too small. Uh, it's whatever you are comfortable with. Yeah, this I said to him, I was like, it's an illusion. Like, it, as soon as I get lean again, I'll shrink down. Like, it's, it's yeah. a bit... People don't know what they're looking at. Anyway, we're pussy and crack on the way. Right, I've had next? half a glass of wine and I'm like, whoop. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's only glass of wine soon because I've got big dinner for you. I know. I feel like we shouldn't drink on the podcast. Actually, so we're talking about the advice wise. I took my own advice and I have cooked you. Yep. Dinner from scratch, DJ Barbecue. We won't be listening to this, but um, great book called Fire Food. We've got chicken with Alabama white sauce, macaroni and cheese, um, all cooked up, ready for your delicate. Delectation? Yeah, delectation. I think that's a word. Okay. Hi guys, love the show. I've recently bought and renovated a house with my girlfriend and we finally moved in after two months of knocking it about. We've been together for three and a half years and I want to get engaged to her. <laughs> Obviously, I want to keep it a secret. We're going on holiday next year skiing, which will hopefully still go ahead. And I figured that's a pretty solid location to drop to the knee. Oh. I've got a story about that. There's a few things I've got no clue about though and I wanted to know your thoughts and opinions. One, how do you ask the old man for permission when he's four hours away from us? I've always thought a pint and a chat would do it well but that never happens because we barely ever see him. Two, well, okay, should we just start with one? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, and then I want you to, you can talk about this because you've done this. It doesn't matter if he's four hours from you. You say that you're going skiing next year. So you've got like the whole rest of this year and I presume you're probably going to see them around Christmas time. So just sit down with him around Christmas time, maybe go for like a walk with him or just drop him a text before you get there and say like, find an excuse because I'd like to talk to you privately about something. And then ask him, and I think it's really important that you do, and I think it'll mean a lot to both of them, her and him, if you do. Um, James. So I would, uh, two, four hours is no excuse, sir. I, I, I had a mate of mine called Garth Chamberlain, who actually, I talk about him, what a flanker, but uh, he listens to the pod as well, I think. Um, he went on some epic adventure, like he basically sent his wife on a fake modelling job to a country, went over to meet her parents, got permission, flew back over just in time to meet her. He put it all on the internet. It's like some epic journey. Yeah, okay. when she, and she got to this event, didn't know what was going on, got handed an iPad, it showed all the memories of of their last time and then he came out and met her and got down on one knee um, and he showed all, it was all the journey from him getting to trying to get from one place to another so four hours is nothing mate I if I were you I would pick up the phone to him or send him an email or even better send him a letter 
a nice little handwritten letter would go down a drink because it's something that parents keep um, unless you get divorced and they burn it but they'll probably burn you as well um, and you write to him and say listen I'm I'd love to take you for dinner um, if that's okay just one on one I've got a few things to, to do but you don't need to do dinner I mean let's face it it's still an in-law you don't need to do dinner you know, well, just go for a pint I like the pint fine, pint, pint or dinner yeah fine but I mean pint you didn't dinner. go for dinner no but you're going two hours so he's going to be hungry you're always thinking <laughs> think, think of the food you know uh, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm thinking about the food but I went there two hours I'm like I went to meet your dad in London I need a chowder Savoy Grill I was like after that I need a chowder so I would go and I would go and meet you him at the Savoy Grill you're at the American, American bar. bar at the Savoy yeah Fine. Um, <laughs> Two completely different fine, areas fine, of the sorry. hotel. And then I would basically then go and say, um, you know, can we go meet for food, sit down and just sit and hit him with him. It's just you know, a few drinks. I'd, I'd you know, chat about a few things. And then just after main, hit him with the, um, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to take. What did you say to my dad? I basically said, I really love, um, I really love Chloe. Uh, I think she's the best thing that's ever happened to me. She's so special. She makes me laugh. <laughs> I love I'm making you do this on the she podcast. La- she laughs at my jokes. Um, and it would you know, be the greatest honour of my life if you'd let me marry her, if that's okay. Aww. And he went, um, yeah. Oh. He went, he went, fucking about time. Oh, I Just if. need to get rid of the old deer, and then I'm back, back on a cruise around the world. <laughs> and that was it. And, and then you high five, smashed a couple of um, old fashions and rolled out. Dickie's such a lad. I made, him, a lad. I made him dinner the other night, and he was so grateful I know, it was the key yeah because my mum went on cooking strike like two decades yeah ago. your dad's always cooking always eating. cooked so he cooked some dinner and he was like thank you thank you <laughs> thank you um so okay. i did that's the first one so yeah i listen i would reach what, out yeah. go down and meet for a drink or i did for dinner pub lunch use the good pub guide find a little spot yeah you'll, you'll have time between now and christmas and yeah let them know that you want to have but a four prime. hours ain't ain't a long way and also it's fucking worth it for um things so you can get a nice little thing like a little B and B or something. Staring no, but no, but I'm, they, he'll, you'll definitely see them by around Christmas time. Well, he did it says they don't see them that often. Yeah, but Christmas. All right. Come on. All right. Scrooge. <laughs> Scrooge. Um, but I would also give him a heads up to, to say that you want to talk privately, so that although it might look a bit bait coming from you. Yeah. Um. Okay. Two. How the hell do you go about deciding on a ring and the size of a ring? Okay. So there's two answers to this. One, you basically say to her. We, do you want to show me what kind of ring you'd be thinking about? Which the girl who is obsessed with the ring will love because it means she basically gets to pick her own ring. I would have killed James if he'd done that because it would have completely ruined the surprise. And I think you only get surprises like this in life one or two times when you get proposed to, when you find out you're pregnant, when you find out the sex of the baby. There's a handful of times you get really meaningful surprises like that. And I would have killed him if he'd have told me. Um, and also, if she's a good girl, which I really hope she is, because you sound amazing, um, she won't care about the size of it. She'll more care about the style of it. So, like, I'm very lucky. James got me a fucking insane ring. Um, but I I told him, like, not immediately, because that would have been really rude. But later, like, I almost feel guilty because I never cared about the size of the diamond at all. I only cared that it was my style. So I like Art Deco. So my ring kind of looks like, almost like the Eiffel Tower, which is ironic because we got engaged in Paris. Um, so <laughs> cliche, but it was so good. Um, it kind of looks like the Eiffel Tower. It's It's got real shape to it and a real structure to it. And as an Art Deco fan, that's what I love. Um, one of my friends just got a ring that's based on Emily Ratatowski's ring. Google it and have fun looking at photos of her, FYI. But it's really like weird and like abstract. There's like one square diamond and one like um, marquee diamond and they're off kilter. Um, but a lot of women would find that like weird and not like it, but I personally love it. And then you've just got like the standard traditional diamond with like a halo around it, which is little diamonds around it. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's not the size of the ring that matters. It's the style of the ring. And you could actually probably get an idea of the style that she likes by speaking to like her best friend and her best friend will not tell her because women do not ruin shit like this for each other. Um, So maybe ask her best mate. So my approach to this would be uh, when you're next out shopping and you know, but give yourself enough time as well. I know you want to do it on the ski trip thing, but you know, getting your ring, getting it right is is a is a palaver in itself and can be. Um, obviously, depending on budget, I've got a great guy, Bond uh, jewelry and diamonds who um, will oh, we'll make it from scratch. That, yeah, that's, will, that's his whole thing. We'll custom everything for you, whatever you need, mm. whatever you look at. But you go online on the website and you can literally build the ring. What yeah. is it, Bond? Bond jewelry and diamonds. Right? Yeah, and it's amazing. And he and he he was brilliant. So Get the Chloe ring. Yeah, so basically he he came um 
he came and met me and I basically sat down and said, listen, I know nothing about diamonds. I know nothing about any of this stuff. I don't understand it. You know, cut, clarity, color, all this, you know, uh, carrot. I just didn't know what, what was going on. Obviously, um, what I'd done with Chloe a few times that when we were out shopping, I would walk past room shops and say, oh, what, which ones do you like in here? Just absentmindedly to say what she done. She would say, oh, I like art deco, I like this. So you start doing it, but you do it over such an extended period that it's she doesn't think it's going to come around the corner. So then you get an idea. And I basically sat down with Jamie from, from Bond uh, Jewelry and Diamonds and said, um, listen, uh, you know, what she wants art deco, what's the story? And we basically, he made a computer model of it, showed it to me, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't expensive. Um, all the kind of things, got all the stuff put together, and, and I said, this is... What? No, I know, the, 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 the process. Joking. And then she said, uh, yeah. Um, and then she said about the, uh, you know, the ring and how I want it to to look or whatever. Um, and then I chose the size of diamond. And obviously with diamonds, you know, you can go bigger. Uh, if it, well, listen, if you cash money, you can go massive. It's not a problem. But you can sometimes go bigger, but there's things called inclusions in it. So it'll be bright, but, you know... It's a floor that a fl nobody can see. Yeah, there's flaws in the, in the diamonds, so you get bigger ones. Or you can go smaller, but more but, but brighter. It's up to you, really. And the way they cut it, there's loads of things to do. But I would 100% get some advice to someone reputable. Stay away from mental high street um, places because uh, they mark up all the diamonds find an independent that will sit down with you and help you look at some different designs like I did I took six months to design yours I went I don't like that like this add this don't do this it was longer this. than that well, it was a bit longer than but that you kept yeah. changing your mind you I didn't shit. change my mind it kept, you kept pissing me off and I was like right put it on hold for another month James, James handles disagreements so well <laughs> yeah I do okay yeah. right next how do you hide a ring when you'll probably share a suitcase? Well, first of all, you don't have to share a suitcase, but if you do, you need to put it in something that she is not going to look in. So that would be, and James can talk about how he did it, but a jacket pocket, she's not gonna go into your jacket pocket. A uh, toiletry bag, uh, to she's not going to go into a toiletry bag like women take care of their toiletries and maybe just say to her when you're packing it like babe make sure you bring toothbrush and a toothpaste I've run out and then she's definitely not going to go into it so it's the only thing I would go into yours for or there is also the option of if your bag has like a lining inside of it just like very subtly in like a dark corner where she'll never look maybe just put the ring in the lining so it sits between the bag and yeah, the lining or, or to carry, take it and carry on, on yeah the plane. so how did you do it because this is a funny story um, well I, I, we were on the Eurostar so we went on the Eurostar to pattern, and I had it in my man bag. Uh, <laughs> what a man bag? It was a bag that belongs to a man. Instead of a handbag for a woman, I had my man bag. Or like porn, prostitution yeah, numbers. Yeah, guns, drugs, everything. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very manly bag it was, flick knife. Um, and so I basically put it in there. But the problem was when I got the day I was going to ask you to marry me, I, I had a coat on. It was uh, one of the defected wasn't broken it was from defective clothing no it wasn't it was a bomber it was a blue bag. Bomber. no it wasn't it was the ralph Lauren bomber that oh, i bought sorry, you oh sorry the same it cost sorry, a pretty sorry, penny sorry sorry right i got one that's the same but so it was the ralph Lauren one and i basically put the... <laughs> this was one of the most expensive items all right, i've ever bought you off. yeah you nicked it you've worn it all the time i don't it even own it better anymore. On me. <laughs> so i don't even own it so yeah it's the most expensive item you bought yourself so basically i had the ring in my my pocket and um i went to go on the uh into a, a, a museum but it's a metal detector and I was like, oh, where were oh we? my God. It was the Arc de Triomphe. Yeah, the Arc de Triomphe, first time, as a meth detector, oh my God, it's going to set it off. She's going to see it. But she had no idea. I'd, I'd waited so long. No, do you know why I didn't? I, I, I did think when we went to Paris, maybe he'll propose. Like, maybe. But the first night we had dinner at... Café Lom. Café Lom. And you, it like literally like looks out over the Eiffel Tower and the Eiffel Tower is like sparkling. And I was obviously like, I'd never been to Paris, which is ridiculous because I'm like a Londoner. And I just, and I was at the time, how old was I? 30, 29? Yeah, 30, I think. And I just like, was like crying and we had the most romantic night. And when we got home that night, I was like, okay, he's not going to propose. And that, I was fine with it because it was such a beautiful trip already. And it was just night one. I was like, he's not going to propose because if he was going to do it, he would have done it tonight. And I just, that was it. I just kind of parked. Oh, <laughs> exciting. Yeah. Um, I just kind of parked it and cracked on. So yeah, I wouldn't have known anything. I, I, I actually always think that maybe I should have done it on that first night, but it was almost quite no. magical and you didn't, you didn't know the second time. No, I and so that. basically the art trip, I went through the metal detector and then I went to, to another place, the metal detector. I was like, ah. And then I thought about going to the Jardin de Tuileries. Um, but it wasn't as green because it was in the winter but I was I still got down no, it was spring but it was just pre-spring yeah spring. and I got down on one knee and I was like will you marry me and you were like hand in your mouth and I was like is that yes or no and you were like crying and you just you sort of looked at the ring you never once looked at it until I put it on I didn't look at it till we were in the Louvre and yeah. then we were, we were opposite the Mona Lisa 
And then I was like, oh, there's a ring on my finger. I should probably look at it. And I looked at it and I was like, <laughs> I really did think like, oh, shit. <laughs> you didn't need to do that. And then I was like, oh, wow. But then, so basically, yeah, you, there are ways of means help. But I would put it in your, your, your carry on. I wouldn't let your missus anywhere near it. Um, uh, keep it in your pocket. Um, I mean, I wouldn't put it in your pocket when you go to the airport, but just keep it on yourself. I wouldn't um, put it in your pocket at all. No, no, only if you're gonna get, when you're going to go and do it, I think. Obviously, what are you going to put it on his <laughs> ass? <laughs> That's a safe place to put it. Um, so, I, yeah, I would do that. Hi, James and Chloe. I'm binge listening to the pod at the moment and absolutely loving it. Please keep me anonymous. I wanted to ask a question, though. I'm 38, recently divorced, and have finally found the courage to start dating again. I've been seeing this guy for a couple of months now, and I am loving it. As this whole dating game has moved on a fair bit since I was last out there 15 years ago, I really need some advice. How long do you leave it before you have the conversation and giving yourself the boyfriend-girlfriend titles? Or do you just not even do that now? Keep up the good work. Anonymous. So um, I personally think that you need to have the conversation at some point. But you need to say, look, I'd quite like to be exclusive. Where are you on that? I don't want you to feel pressured. I don't want us to fuck this up because I'm having a great, great, great time with you. But I would like it if we were exclusive. I'm open to the conversation and hope for the best and I think seeing each other for two months I mean I would say personally I would be happy to have that conversation with somebody after four or five weeks so I think that you're definitely in the right area however you know that I have friends of mine who who would be like are you fucking mad like wait at least six months and I would be like get fucked you're either on the same page or you're not period we had that conversation yes but i think don't lie we had that conversation like a month in yeah well we kind of had to didn't we yeah otherwise you had it with me i didn't really have it with you well i was going to austria for two months so i was either gonna have as much sex as i could (laughs) or i was gonna stay really faithful why can't you just go to austria and have some you know have some um, regular sex (laughs) well well, i meant why can't you have some cheese and some melted stuff and look there were gonna be snowboarders there you know how i feel about um i didn't know anything about snowboarders no about like what's it called extreme sport oh god just even thinking about it (sighs) anyway and it was either that or you so i gave you the option we picked you (laughs) (laughs) i picked me (laughs) and what a complete and utter fuck up that was Um, your thoughts i mean look i think you don't really know someone so i'm i I, of all four these people who like get in a relationship early full head over heels move in and and trying to get married very early on i'm i'd love to see the stats on whether how often that works or not because i don't think you really know someone until someone's been ill someone's had a problem someone's lost their job all the things that life throws at you you know you can live a very charmed existence and not have any of those problems i think two months in you know if you're really enjoying yourself and you're getting a sense but you should you should get a sense from your partner if you're seeing them every time at like nine till one in the morning no, nine at night or one in the morning then you're a booty call and you've been seeing them two months if you're actually going on dates enjoying each other's company spending a bit of time then perhaps a conversation over over a drink with you and go look i really like you um, I wonder if you want to take it to the next level and maybe a bit more serious or uh, be exclusive. Um, you know, I know I want to and see how it goes. And if they don't understand, they freak out, then perhaps they weren't there, the right person for you anyway. But again, you've got to be aware of, the, have the self-awareness of the relationship. If, yeah, but, I, but it's a big if you're just getting If you're just shagging each other and, and you know, there's no interaction in between. No, but even, even, even then, it's a big red flag of a human, male or female, if you've been seeing each other for two months and you try and have the conversation and they freak out. Yeah, I agree. Like, that's like, you don't want to be with that person anyway. And what I will also say is like, babe, for you, I don't think, I think this is a win-win situation. Going through a divorce is one of the hardest things that humans have to deal with and go through. And I think that getting back on the wagon and starting to date again is an extremely big hurdle. And I think that, look, you might have, if let's just say worst case scenario, this dude turns around and is like, oh no, I'm definitely not there worst case scenario and you either you know carry on banging him or you bounce either or you might have a few weeks of being like oh what's wrong with me uh, as we all do because your pride takes a hit but ultimately you've gone through way worse way bigger disappointments than this and you got back on the wagon and you and you you're you're living your life again and that is something that you should bloody well celebrate because that's a hard thing to do and yeah i think it's a win-win for you and i think if you're ready to have the chat you fucking have the chat <laughs> miss chloe haskell says it says it how it is Okay, hi, loving the podcast and your wide range of subjects, banter and obvious love for one another. Lovely. Yeah. 
That's <laughs> cold. I was drinking wine. One of the things which never hear. Real love of my. <laughs> One of the things you, which you never hear much about because the embarrassment of admitting it is premature ejaculation, which I have suffered from on and off for most of my adult life. It often seems a taboo subject and second best to erectile dysfunction. <laughs> Damn your erectile dysfunction. <laughs> Fucking getting number place. Number, who's won this year's award? Erectile dysfunction again. Second place. Mm, premature. Um, it can have caught many causes. Uh, and actual help and information is very limited. I'm very interested in what you both think. Thanks. Keep it up. I almost read his name out then. <laughs> Didn't, don't do that. Um, so, when I was younger, I didn't have premature ejaculation in terms of like Forrest Gump style, where like girl touched my knee and I went off. Didn't happen like that. But in the act of sex, early days, I was it was a bit fired up and it yeah, it used to go off a little bit quickly. It um, was really, really I a, normal. I had a mate as well who listens to this. We used to we uh, at some point we got he he had a similar problem, but it was a bit more intense than me. We used to get this like. Chinese numbing stuff you used to paint on the end of the top of your willy before sex and it would just numb it and you'd be fine it'd last like, lay longer then Durex brought out the Durex Performer condom oh is that what that is yeah it's got a bit of numbing stuff on it so just yeah. my toes it's got a bit of numbing stuff so um, uh, but that's obviously a very mild form and I imagine just what a lot happens to teenage boys um, just getting a bit you know I think it's really 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 common and I think um there's a million and one ways that you can deal with it and obviously going to a sex therapist actually we're going to get my best friend who's a sex therapist <laughs> shock james haskell <laughs> no not shock um <clears throat> we're going to get her on the podcast to talk about things like this so i promise that we will revisit this at a later date because we are not qualified professionals in any fucking way shape or form hence why we're drinking on the podcast but i do think that um sorry no, so, so there are things you can do, as James says, things that you can do to desensitise the area, like condoms or apparently numbing cream, although I would definitely make sure that you look into that on a m- medical um, <laughs> standpoint before you put it on your penis. Um, and there are other things you can do, like um, maybe pleasuring yourself before the event um, might help. Um, <laughs> Never go out with a loaded gun? Yeah, like maybe several times if you need to. Um, in terms of... Um, you know, there, I'm sure that there is like cognitive behavioral therapy therapies that you can implement. So things that you can do during the whole act of, I mean, all kind of sexual arousal that will help you keep a lid on it. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but I, I would say, yeah, like think about maybe clearing that problem out in a weird way before think about like again um you know aesthetic or kind of um medicinal things that you can do that might slow things down and think about um cognitive behavioral therapies ways you can talk yourself out of getting too aroused too quickly but we are not professionals and we do need to get my best friend on the podcast i will say one thing as well depending on the severity of it foreplay is is a great opportunity to to avoid that but what i mean it's not getting piped off is if you're going down on a girl, you know, kissing, you know, uh, you know, kissing all of her over her body, playing with her breasts, doing all that kind of stuff, going down on her, letting her have a mega time, and then mentally the pressure's kind of off you a little bit. And if yeah. things if things go off, and you know, I think you you can spin it as well and say, look, you know, as long as they've had a good time and you're you're honest and say, look, you know, I'm really excited, I really fancy, I'll just, you know, this I might come quite quickly, but it's, it's a compliment to you. And then it happens, that's fine. I think where people have disappointment is if you feel like your partner's not getting any satisfaction. So I think if you if you were to not went out before you did a job, and I think if you were to focus on the foreplay, focus on your partner, be a really selfless lover in that respect, mm. and then, you know, once the pressure's off, you might feel a little bit relaxed. And also, alternate, you know, if you're going to, if you're having sex with someone and you feel like you can just pull out, go down on them, get calm yourself down, even go back in again, or you know, and th- those are some te- techers that you know patented patented techers. <laughs> they, just, are. Oh. they reek of James. <laughs> <laughs> they reek um, of, a, of a professional James Haskell job. I actually think that's really good advice, and I'll tell you why from a female standpoint. You've been blown away by the advice the last couple of pods, haven't you? Oh, and my friend's like, James gives the best advice, and I'm like, James <laughs> is full of shit advice, because he doesn't you? take his own advice. Although tonight you have, tonight you have. You have. But generally speaking, do you guys understand like how painful it is where like he we were on the podcast he's giving people like really wise, thoughtful, emotionally intelligent advice. And then behind closed doors, like my lights aren't on and he punches my dashboard. I'm like, We need to relax now. We need to take some of your own advice. Well turn his fucking lights on and we They were, they were just on the wrong setting. Anyway. Dark setting. We digress. Okay. Fog lights. Off lights. Dark setting. Dark lights. Darkness. Um I actually think that's really good advice, and I'll tell you why that's really bloody good advice. Because most women most of us either cannot or have never come from penetrative sex which what that does is it 
opens up the door to us basically presuming that most guys we're having sex with are not going to make us come from penetrative sex, which kind of lets a lot of you off the hook. So if you can find a way to stimulate her orally or <laughs> manually... <laughs> Like, well, if it's skillful, both <laughs> yeah. at the same time. Um, which I'm not going to lie, it's easier to do because let's face it, it's just stimulation. Um, you know, watch, watch. Some I think stuff. there's a lot of blokes out there doing a pretty bad job on it. Though. You, you make it sound like it's simple. Well, no, 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 no. Think about it like this, guys. Think of the female anatomy, yeah. and then think penetration. That's the thing that a lot of men can't, and a lot of women, so a lot of men don't have the skill to make us come from penetrative sex, which is fine, it's normal. And a lot of women, like, physiologically find it almost impossible, if not entirely impossible, to come from penetrative sex. And then think of this word, stimulation. And then I'll let you take it from there. And also, just before you interrupt me, being patient and taking your time with it, because it's like you guys, like, it doesn't it doesn't just, like, happen. Um, but wait, hang on, let me just finish this. So if you can make her orgasm like that, she probably won't mind if you prematurely ejaculate after. Because if you prematurely ejaculate after that, she'll probably be quite relieved that it's done. She got hers, you got yours, and it's over. Actually, women really don't like it when sex go when they come, and then it goes on and on and on and on. And it's uncomfortable. Sorry about that. Um, (laughs) There's also three other little tips for you. Breathing controlling your breathing so if you're in in the act you get excited you know you can tense up don't tense up your balls either because that's where they sit when you're gonna when you're gonna come and you know and also uh if you squeeze the bottom of your penis uh quite hard and calm that it can it can stop you there's loads of little things there's books and bits and pieces to to help you i don't know why i know i'm like made out i'm the king king of you know like because you did like when you were single you just decided that you were going to become ron jeremy and you like literally did so well you never you never became a sex expert well i think but you certainly tried to professor shag um i um yeah but i think those are little bits and pieces and but also again women out there this is a message for you you know a lot like just as men fuck up a load of things for you and make the problems worse women on the other hand you know you can make or break someone one of the the key aspects of a lot of mental health life and everything else is an interaction you take for granted with someone could define how that person acts the rest of their time yeah and even the most flippant comment so you know if someone doesn't get it up and you going problem and you being tense and upset can fucking make it 10 times worse if a guy comes really quickly and you go what was that it oh, i made a thing you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna cause a lot of problems with, with yeah. that so i think you've got you've got a role to play to and understand it, that applies to men as well I agree, I agree i've had men say stuff to me in the bedroom where i'm like uh and that to them it's nothing like right. how a woman would be like oh my god you came oh fuck i'm really disappointed yeah. it's like okay like don't do that obviously but sometimes you, Sometimes you even have to hear it come out your mouth to be like, oh, fuck. Like, you- I've said that to a guy before and then been like, oh, God, what have I done? What have I done? But also, like, the same thing, like, applies. Like, I think a lot of men will sometimes say things about a woman or her body or something. And then that can have a lasting uh, yeah, effect. Yeah, and, and if you don't understand exactly what we're saying, or everyone had parents, right? Imagine when you were younger and your whole life stopped and started with your parents. You want some affection. Your parents said something to you. Like, you can't do that, you can't do this, and everything else that. And that stick stuck with you for the whole time. That carries on in every single area of your life. So every time you meet someone, have an interaction with someone, or deal with someone over a problem, you define that, it could potentially define how that person carries on. That's why we're all fucked up and got issues. It starts with our parents, and it carries on through our, through our lives. So do... <laughs> Again, you need to take your head. <laughs> <laughs> Professor. Just, um, but, but uh, yeah, so I think, girls, you've got a role to play. But, mate, also... If you've got a good got a good setup, be just be front up and say, "Listen, I've got a bit of a hair trigger on the old piece. You know, I'm you know, let me take care of business, and I might go off a bit quickly, but it's not a problem." But Chloe's also got a point. If it's real bad, you can do therapy, you can read some books, try the squeezing, try the breathing. Um, yeah, there's there's both physiological and psychological tricks to this. And again, we are not professionals. We will get one on though, and she can talk about this because this is. I'm nearly her a professional. Bag. What, as professional as Miriam? No, not as professional as Miriam, yeah, okay. Dr. Miriam. Go on, next one. Oh, I'm obsessed with my friends. Okay, good afternoon. <laughs> Posh. <laughs> good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hope you're both well. Oh, this person is so brilliant. Well, well. My partner and I have been together for five years now and are engaged. The first two years of our relationship, we had a long distance relationship, but now we live together. Since moving in together three years ago, we rarely have sex. At the very most, once a week, and at the least, once a month. It's not actually that bad, but anyway. 
Um, Sex is great for both of us when we have it. We are both attentive to each other's needs. Congratulations. We thought it was attraction, but as it turns out, we are definitely still attracted to each other. We've started doing more things together, like going to the gym, etc. We want to have more sex, but honestly, we just don't know how. We barely flirt with each other at all to initiate it. It's almost like we've forgotten how to do this. Do you have any advice? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So this is like applies to so many couples, including James and I, who have been together for a long period of time and who are, it's so funny because I think in your head, like you think about long-term relationships and couples that have less sex and you think, oh, they're bored. Oh, they're not attracted to each other anymore. Oh, there's someone else, like whatever it is. But actually it's very possible to be in a long-term relationship, still be in love, still be attracted to each other, still have great sex, but actually find that you have less sex. It's very normal because that novelty factor of having sex with this person has died out. Um, So there's that. And it's very normal because living with somebody in a very practical day-to-day life, it isn't romantic and it isn't sexy. It's just not. And you do have to work to keep the spark. You are completely and utterly in the safety zone, my friend. Having sex once a week, to, once a month to once a week is actually like pretty good for a long-term relationship. Um, obviously that's subjective. I would want it more than that. And I'm guessing from your email that you do too but it, in the it by and large it's actually pretty good you say that you love having sex with each other you're both really attentive to each other's needs that you're still really attracted to each other it's just the day-to-day minutiae has gotten in the way so for you i would say start to force a sexy environment so like once you know once every now and again and obviously this is financially dependent i don't want to presume that this is like easy for everyone to do but go for dinner maybe go stay at a hotel for a night um maybe just create the house as like a like a romantic environment and i know that sounds like cheesy and cliche but candles music dinner wine um you two all the things are laid on this evening yeah james done really good today um like just make it like by the way i still really fucking fancy you and i'd still really like to have sex with you in terms of your actual actions like taking her out for dinner opening the door you know like I say, going to a hotel room and, you know, while she's brushing her teeth, maybe go and go in the, in the, in the bathroom and surprise her, you know, with some sexual activity. Think you just need to create a bit more of a sexual environment outside of your domestic environment. And I guarantee you it will pick back up and you sound like, you sound like you're completely and utterly in the safety zone. James? Yeah, I think um, it's always a tricky one because um, I think sometimes when you're in a long relationship, you become inherently lazy, you expect things to happen. But but unfortunately, normal life isn't that sexy. Mm. Um, you know, things get in the way. You know, when you start cohabiting, you've got bills, you've got things. There's always friends with a problem. There's always, there's, there's always something. The dishwasher always dish, needs loading the and unloading. The dishwasher, clothing. Like, it's just, Clothes need hanging. You know, if you've got kids, the kids, it's like, it's hard. But I think where where that starts is first of all is, is with communication. Is actually flagging, saying, "Listen, you know, I fucking love shagging you. I really fancy you. I really want to have sex with you. You know, and I'd like us to put some more effort in if if you're keen. And you know, and and you know, I think if she hopefully she'll come around and say yes, that's the thing that's what I want to do. I think when we we previously had with Emma Sale on, who was brilliant, you can listen to that episode. You know, I think you know even if you're not feeling it, just pinging her a little message going. You know, when you're out out of the shops, you're away from her going, I was thinking about you earlier, you know, I think about how good your ass looks, think about how good, you know, whatever. I was a bit crass men-wise, you know, but that would be my go-to. You know, um, I think, again, Chloe said, making that, that those time, those nights, maybe setting aside a night a week, which is your, your time, where mm. the mundane gets put to one side and you are, you know, maybe each one of you chooses a date night opposite opposite thing and it could be yeah. it could be saying it could be saying something you know staying at home you could go look if you want to explore some fruiter aspects you could say oh look we're gonna start watching porn together you know we want to start want to do this you know these various different things which i think would really kind of help um and you know i think reinforcing how much you fancy each other and you know around the house being a bit gropey you know obviously not when the in-laws are around or you know oh, don't know what james does like i love i love it when you're gropey because it's me um but James, sometimes I'll be like cooking him. Like he loves prawns, pill pill. So it's like, it's like hot, boiling, spitting oil. And I'm like cooking it. And then he'll come up behind me and fill me up. And I'm like, while I absolutely love this, I hate you for doing it now because yeah. I can't respond. And if anything, you're annoying me and you're putting me in, in a very dangerous situation. So pick your moment. And I, yeah, I always think that you disagree. But I think in bed at night is yeah. always a pretty safe the, sexual Well, we zone. talked about it on, on, on here before. Unfortunately for me, bedtime, you know, by the t- end of the day, how hard I train, 
How, I know you work very hard on training as well, but I, I do. It's a different kind <laughs> of training. What are you talking about? It's a different kind of training. You know, by the time I associate bed with sleep, and that's a problem. You know, I don't mind going operating in the bed, but I'm more of a you know an early evening kind of man. As soon as we, it's after a big graze, graze and, I'm, and and I want to go to sleep, that's me. That's me done. Um, so I think, look, there are some things. There's little bits and pieces you can do. Communication, sending an email if you're at work. Just, babe, I can't wait to get home and rip your clothes off. I'd like to do this. Do you fancy putting you this on? What? Those kind of things might be quite cool as well. And you could say to her, listen, is there anything you fancy me wearing? Do you want me to come in and dress the fireman or something? I don't know, whatever she's into. <laughs> so 90s. Isn't that amazing? I've said sex and with you where Charlotte starts dating that fireman from New Jersey. And he's like, no, you don't. Sorry. I'm sure there are loads of women I'm talking about anyway. Oh, sorry. And now my head's gone back to Sex and the City, one of the funniest shows of all time. Anyway, um, I will just say one thing. To me- sorry, I've got this guy in my head now and it's quite hard. As long as he's in your head, not anywhere else. That'd be nice. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> relax. It's a really funny episode. Um, so uh, I will just say to men, it's really good to sexualize your partner and to tell them that you're sexualizing them, you know, via email, text, phone call, in real life, whatever. But I will say one thing, like some women don't love it when their partners are like wear this be like this like i wouldn't really send her like i don't know i personally wouldn't send her any porn what i would do is i would flip don't it. send them porn yeah I, well i i mean i'm a, women are different everybody's different but what i would do is i would flip it and i would make it all about her so like do you have a fantasy of like something that you're wearing you know that would turn you on if i were to do x to you or like if i were to do y for you and if she's defensive and it's like well why what are you talking about be like i really am like having some filthy thoughts about you today and i want to come in and i want to you know make yeah. you whatever but let her kind of do that and then eventually hopefully quite quickly that will bleed into and what do you want what do you need what turns you on although to be honest i actually don't think it doesn't sound like you really struggle to turn each other on it just no. sounds like you need to create the right environment yeah and, and also different you know different strokes different folks different vibes you know one night could be romantic candle night other night could yeah, be a bit, bit more it. gamey night you know we flip it ga- Jake, gamey sounds like sounds to do with hunt, hunting but a bit more like fetishy venison, <laughs> venison. Ooh, slapping you with a big chicken breast in the <laughs> is that ga- is chicken game no, no gamey pheasant or partridge or peasant, peasant. <laughs> slap a peasant in the face oh I'm getting so turned on Ooh, get back on the slapping um <laughs> this sofa this has gone so James has finished his beer I've finished my wine it's gone downhill rapidly um, uh, what was I going to say we do that we have to flip it yeah. James and I have completely different ideas of like how to like yeah. create a sexual environment the problem is all the environments Chloe wants to create we, I want to go to sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah or, that's completely true all the environments I'm like this is a sexy time yeah. this is nice this is intimate James is like I would much rather just like not be here <laughs> but for him I'm like is this a porn set because yeah. <laughs> like that's and ridiculous. it actually turns out it is and <laughs> if it was filmed it would go straight win the yeah, AVNs I'm, I'm a good wife you are a good wife but what I will say is that it should be a push pull and you should be able to flip it and so yeah. James and I will flip it both in date nights and in terms and also, of sex I think sometimes it's hard as well with women and I'm pigeonholing but you know men are I'm on the most part I find much visual. more visual yeah. women are more emotional and yeah. sometimes it's harder to create an emotional thing it's easy to emo- uh, visual yeah no I totally agree but there is a way to make that visual sexual for the woman yeah I agree so like I won't go into detail yeah, but you don't. but I'm sure that you can think of something oh, of course right yeah. where something that he needed that was visual was actually highly arousing to me for a different reason actually. yeah no I know I know what, I know what you mean I, yeah I think you're right I know, but also just advice on something you said never send a woman porn and go this is what I'd like to do to you I met a girl um, I think one of our circle of friends who I think was single and she said yeah I was seeing this guy and he like sent me this video of him banging another bird going this is what I was going to do I I can't remember who the fuck it was I can't remember I was trying to think and I'm thinking this bloke's gone this she'll love this this is what I'm going to do to you no that's voyeurism that's a whole niche in and of itself which I'm not against. No, no, he wasn't. It was, it was like me having sex with you, me breaking up with you, and then me going to another girl going, I really want to have sex with you. I want to do this. And then showing a pic, showing you a video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's voyeurism masquerading as oh, I want right. to do this with you. Oh, right, because then fine. he got a kick out of showing somebody um, having yeah. sex. Well, I don't know. Which I'm not against at all. And I, to- I can psychologically completely understand it. But that is really, really risky. Don't do that. Okay. Well, that's all we've got time for um, <laughs> this week on Couples Quarantine. We're back after a little break. If you like this podcast, please share, please subscribe, please tell your friends. It's not to do with rugby, it's not to do with fitness, it's to do with couples, fun, sex, relationships, 
us not being couple goals, us telling you the bare naked truth. You are writing a column for the Sun at the moment, not Sun, Fabulous Nosy. Yes. Agony on. How do people get hold of you for that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> right to the sun. Dear the sun. Why, why are you so hot? <laughs> uh, it, uh, and my book, What a Flank is out. It's time for a seller. And I'm launching a new podcast called What a Flanker. And it's nothing to do with rugby. It's me interviewing all sorts of people that I'm really interested in and want to learn from. That's be out very soon, out next Friday as an episode. I love you all. No, you don't. I don't love you all. <laughs> I love some of you. No, you don't. I like a little few of you. <laughs> Bye, guys.